Hello, I'm JW, and in this video we're going to look at how you prove things are dead, or in other words, the power is not connected. And of course this is something you need to do every single time before touching anything that may have had power on it, because uh, even if you thought you turned it off you may have obviously gone to the wrong switch, or the switch was broken, or it could be one of those dodgy things where somebody has wired the same circuit to two different circuit breakers, or there could be some other source of supply like a generator or a solar panel or who knows what. So this is uh, how you do it properly, and we'll have a look at some of the things you can use and also some of the things that you should definitely not be using. So what I've got here is a uh, just a single RCD here. Obviously this could have been part of a larger consumer unit. Uh, we've got the power coming in at the top here on the brown and the blue wires, so line and neutral. And we've also got the earth connection here to this little block in the front there. And a couple of wires just coming at the bottom. Again, the line neutral there just going to these terminal blocks. But uh, of course in the real world you have a whole load of different circuits and things attached there. And uh, I've got a whole selection of stuff here, some of which is appropriate, and of course other things which are not. So we'll start with the things which are not, and this of course is first on the list. It's one of those dreadful neon screwdriver affairs where you're supposed to put your finger here on this metal button, and then just poke this into the appropriate place, and in theory it's supposed to light up, but it uh, kind of does there, but it's so dim, I mean it's really a pretty poor example. Certainly not a reliable thing at all. So uh, definitely not going to be using that. These things are uh, unreliable at best and uh, just completely dangerous at worst. I've already done a video on these which a whole load of people have uh, wrangled and complained over, so uh, go and look at that if you wish to continue there. Now I've got these devices which are certainly uh, perfectly safe to use. It's all plastic construction, battery powered, just place it on the conduction question and if it's connected to the power then it will light up. So of course that's the neutral, so it doesn't do anything. And if placed it in the hole there with the line, then see it just glows red at the end. So it's a bit difficult to see because of the uh, bright lighting here. But uh, as you can see, it lights up on that one, and of course, uh, not on the neutral as you would expect, and of course, on the earth, obviously, uh, not as well. But the problem with these is that uh, whilst they can be used to confirm the power is actually on, they're not suitable to confirm that the power is off because, again, they're not desperately reliable, they're not making any kind of contact with the circuit itself, purely relying on a uh, Passive effect, and again, they're not reliable because here's the earth here, and uh, okay, so we poke it in there, it actually lights up on the earth as well, but not if we put it here, put it underneath, and it does, and then so on, and it does on the wires, of course, and it does on the uh, wire there. So, uh, yes, they can be used in some circumstances, but as you can see, uh, not a desperately reliable item. Now, something else you may have thought using it is a multimeter, and of course, this does have the two. Uh, test prods here which will connect to the actual circuit and whilst of course these will display voltages there is a possible problem in using these to prove that the power is disconnected and the problem is that uh, multimeters by their actual design have a variety of different sockets to plug the leads in this particular one has three but others may have four so you could actually plug things into the wrong holes and get the uh, incorrect kind of readings and of course they have a whole range of different settings here and if you selected the wrong one, of course, and then decided to test the voltage, uh, all kinds of strange things may be displayed, or in some cases, nothing at all. And even if you selected, say, the correct volt setting here, it's still possible to actually set a manual range, for example, which again wouldn't actually display the voltage. And in this particular one, it's got various other things, sort of maximum, minimum options, and various other things. So there's plenty of potential there to uh, select the wrong options, and it would therefore display something which you are not actually intending. And of course you could end up with say sort of 240 volts at the end and uh, something totally different appearing on the display. But we'll just have a go with this anyhow just to uh, prove that such things can be done. So in this case we just selected the uh, AC volts range there and this is in auto range and uh, got the two probes here. Notice they've got the insulating covers over them so the exposed metal is only that very short piece at the very end there. It's not appropriate to go poking around with the mains with this massive length of metal exposed because of course this could short onto other things and uh, if an arc or something occurred then uh, that's just encouraging it to spread to other areas. So uh, you do need to have those covers on or have leads that uh, only have that small piece exposed at the end. But anyway in this case uh, if we just place the lead on the two terminals in here and then we'll see the voltage display there 261. So of course that's uh, perfectly fine, that's what you would expect. And if we check down here then of course you should get nothing because the switch is in the off position. Just getting a sort of point 0.1 there which is uh, basically pick up from the leads here in proximity to the other wires. 
But uh, as I said, there's uh, certain issues here. For example, if you uh, selected the wrong range there, if you put it in sort of manual range there, if we go in here now and uh, check those things there, then it says OL, which basically means it's over limit. It does have a little symbol here to indicate the uh, power's on and the bar graph is sort of rammed up at the end. But again, it doesn't say 260 volts, so not exactly particularly clear. And of course, there's all kinds of other ranges and settings here, and possibly the uh, wrong sockets and the fuse may have blown, and uh, all kinds of other possibilities. So, if it's all you've got, then uh, by all means use it, but uh, really, it's not a particularly reliable method of actually confirming that the power has been removed. Now, what you should be using, of course, is a device designed specifically to confirm the presence of voltage, and at least we'll always have two testing prods in a similar way to the multimeter. But unlike the multimeter, it won't have any other options for different settings. Now, this is a fairly old design, although you can actually still buy these. Uh, it's simply the two test leads here joined with a loop of wire. And in this one, it has a small lamp in the end there. Let's undo that, we can see that inside. There it is. And of course, the point is when you press these, uh, when there's a voltage between them, the lamp will illuminate. And uh, this is the uh, Drummond model. I say these are moderately old, but you can still buy this uh, similar arrangement. And again, there's no settings to uh, go wrong with, there's no batteries to wear out, and uh, the only thing, of course, is that the uh, lamp needs to be confirmed working, but as we'll see, that's actually part of the procedure. So in this case, of course, we just place the uh, sound the line in neutral there, and see so the lamp will illuminate. So that's uh, one possible option, and uh, again, there's uh, various different uh, makes of those, although the Drummond ones are probably the most common. And the other type of thing are these ones, these sort of electronic measuring type things. And again, there's all kinds of different manufacturers of these, but they're all pretty much the same. You've got, uh, again, the two testing probes there connected with the wire lead in the middle, one of which is just the uh, sort of plain one there, and then the other one, of course, has the indications on the front to display what voltages you actually have. Now, it's quite important to note on these things that although this particular one has a little display here which shows you the voltage, uh, say in 240 or whatever the actual voltage was, this is not what you're looking at to confirm whether the voltage is there or not. That's purely added on as a convenience function, and none of these don't even have this uh, particular display. What you're actually looking at to uh, confirm the voltage is there or not are these uh, LEDs or little things at the side here, which of course will illuminate in an appropriate number depending on the voltage that you have. So, although that's there for uh, Obviously, if you're useful, these are what you're looking at to see what the uh, voltage is or not. Because, of course, this part could fail, it might say uh, the battery has run out or something, and uh, there's various other possibilities that could go wrong there. This one, like a lot of them, also has a uh, continuity function built in, so if you put the probes together, then it beeps like that, but again, that's a secondary issue, it's not uh, essential for the purpose in hand. Now, I'll just show you this one working, and of course, this does make a rather loud noise, so uh, just be aware of that if you're wearing headphones or whatever. And again, it's just a question of placing the two probes in here, and then we should see here the uh, LEDs will illuminate up to the uh, 230 level, as this is a, well, it's actually a 260 volt supply, but uh, illuminating up to that level. This little red thing here will also come on, and we should see AC there, as obviously this is an AC circuit we're testing. So place those in. So that's that particular one, so this is a uh, fluke one, but of course there are other models and other manufacturers, but they all work in pretty much the same way. Now for the rest of this demonstration I've turned off the uh, beeper in this one because uh, that's going to be really annoying, and uh, of course in the real world you will leave that switched on. But uh, again, if we place the uh, probes in here, you'll see that the uh, LEDs along the top there will illuminate up to the 230 level. Again, if the voltage was high it would have the 400 or the 691 illuminated. The little red uh, triangle is illuminated, and the AC in the uh, top right there has illuminated as well. And although it shows the voltage is 263, which of course is very handy, that's not the thing you're looking at to primarily detect whether the voltage is there or not. It is those red lamps above on the top section. Now, one difference between these and the uh, type of just the lamp inside is that if you've got an RCD like this, you can actually test from, say, the uh, earth up here to the outgoing side of the RCD, and it will display the voltage just as we'd expect. 
But if you try to do the same thing with this one, then this is what actually happens. So again, we just go from the uh, Earth terminal there, and we go in the bottom, and let's see the RCD trips straight away, and that's simply because the current that this thing draws is far in excess of the 30 milliamps that the RCD requires to trip. This particular one on the other hand, uh, being electronic, only draws a very small current, and hence does not actually trip the RCD. It does have a way you can trip it by pressing these two buttons, which increases the current through it, but uh, in general though this will not cause the RCDs to trip. Now when it comes to using these in the real world, there's three stages to using these, and the first of those is to make sure that the thing you're testing is actually working still, so uh, clearly if this had say, broken or some malfunction had occurred, totally useless, so uh, of course the first thing to do is confirm that uh, it does actually work, so easily done of course by just connecting it to a power supply there, and let's see that illuminates as expected. Now if we switch off here we should now find that these are disconnected, so again we'll just go in there and test those a second time, and there you go, there's absolutely no indications there whatsoever. So in theory these are now safe to work on because we've switched off here, and that has isolated. And the reason for checking that of course is this switch may have been defective inside, and there may be like a short inside or some other issue. But uh, of course that's not the end of the story, because we still need to make sure that this is actually still working, because though it's fairly unlikely, there is a remote possibility that uh, when it was switched off it's now broken. So we need to check again on a known supply. Now in this particular case, uh, say if this was a consumer unit, still got power at the incoming terminals here, so we could go in there, again just check that that's still working there. So no problems with that, so again check before and after, and then of course you have good confidence that the thing you were testing is actually disconnected, and it's not going to give you a shock or kill somebody. Now in circumstances like this where you've always got the uh, sort of live terminals coming in on your consumer or whatever, then of course it's easy just to go in there and check that those are still working. But there will be circumstances where this is not the case, and you don't have a uh, ready supply of the power to actually confirm that this thing is still working, or in fact uh, check that it was working before you uh, tested something. And in those circumstances uh, there is a solution of course, and it's one of these, or something like it. Now as it says on the box here, this is a proving unit, and essentially it's just battery powered with the uh, batteries in the side, and as it says on the front there, it just creates the voltage up to around 500 volts, so you can then confirm that the test instrument you're using is still working. And they're very simple to use, simply got the two holes here, one for each of the test probes, and there's actually a switch inside, so it only turns on when you actually press down into the hole, so of course that's a bit of a safety feature there. And uh, simply just to confirm that the uh, test equipment is working, it's simply a question of getting the uh, device here, placing the two probes into the holes, and then just pressing down, and of course it should illuminate here. Now because this works on a high frequency AC, it will cause a massive amount of interference on the uh, camera system, so uh, I'll uh, cut down the audio on this, but uh, you'll see here that the uh, lamps should of course illuminate. So as you saw there, they uh, clearly illuminated, and uh, confirming that the device is working. And exactly the same situation would apply with this particular one, again with the lamp in there. Uh, some proving units can't actually provide enough power to light these, this particular one can, and if you're going to buy one of these and you've got these, of course make sure that this does provide enough power to actually light this, otherwise uh, not going to get very far, a complete waste of time. I have to say this one, tip one does have the required power, so again I'll just press this in here, and I'll just mute the audio again because this creates a lot of interference on the camera. But again we'll see the lamp should illuminate at the top here. So there we go, that's uh, how you would do those. So uh, in summary then, it's uh, a proper approved two-pole testing device, check that it's working before use, then check the uh, action we're going to be putting your fingers on, and after that check again that it's still working, and then you've got a good level of confidence that the terminals here are in fact disconnected, and therefore safe to work on. Now just going back to that multimeter, if you are going to use a multimeter to check uh, mains voltages, do not go and buy one of those five pound things from the cheapest shop you can find, and start poking that into sockets and other mains equipment, because uh, that is not going to be suitable or safe. And the reason being that uh, all multimeters uh, should have a rating on them, and you can see at the bottom of this particular one, 
we've got here at the bottom the uh, rating, which is a CAT3, in this particular case, uh, 600 volts. And I'll do another video on these uh, particular categories, but uh, essentially if it doesn't have this, or it's a uh, CAT1 or something like that, it is not suitable for poking around on the mains, and if you do so, it's quite likely that any kind of fault could uh, cause the thing to explode or set on fire. And of course a lot of the uh, cheaper ones in the sort of £10 and under range don't even have any ratings on them, so again, not suitable for testing mains voltages or putting anywhere near consumer units and similar things. And the other important thing is that the even if the meter has the probe rating on, it's also essential that the probes you're using also have a similar rating on them. These have it just printed on the end of the uh, insulation part there. But again, you can have the best multimeter meter in the world, but if you want to just poke in uh, poor quality lead only rated for 10 volts or something, well, obviously there's going to be a problem. So that's how you confirm that the power is off or something is dead, and use the proper two-pole testing device Check that it's working first, then test the thing that you're hoping to work on, and then check that the device you've used is still working at the end, so a three-stage procedure. And certainly uh, never use things like this to confirm the power is off, unreliable and dangerous. And don't use things like this either, because they can confirm the power's on, but again, not reliable enough to confirm that the power is actually off. You can use a multimeter at last resort, but again, there are the issues there with the various settings and different options and other possible problems, so uh, best not if uh, can be avoided, but if that's all you've got, well, uh, obviously you'll have to use it. And uh, testing that something is dead is something you need to do every single time, not just occasionally and not most of the time, because of course that one time you don't check is when the power's going to be on. And although of course there's probably going to be 10 million people now putting comments saying they've had electric shocks 50 times a week for the rest of their life and they're still perfectly fine, of course uh, that may be the case. But uh, there could be this at one time when the electric shock is good enough to kill somebody. And you won't be hearing anything from those people because, of course, they're not around anymore. So uh, electric shocks are totally avoidable, and there's really no reason for anybody to uh, have one ever. But until next time, thanks for watching.